Okay, so this video is about uh, um, about the importance of tough love uh, in getting over a relationship with an abusive uh, BPD or an MPD or any kind of abusive partner. And um, I will show my share some uh, reflections around this. So, so I've been dating, uh, or I used to date this person for uh, circa uh, three years. Um, and uh, it was clearly a, an abusive relationship, you know, I mean, uh, uh, I really struggled to understand what was going on at the time, you know, uh, why she was behaving the way that she did. And uh, I would uh, reach out for help, you know, so I would talk to my sister, I would talk to my mom, I would talk to my friends, you know. And uh, what I what I, now that I'm out of the situation, you know, and I can reflect on what happened, you know, I think... One of the key reasons I struggled to leave this relationship was also the fact that I was not getting the tough love that I needed from uh, these people, you know, of course, I mean, I, I mean they were, I, I mean, I cannot uh, criticize, you know, I mean, uh, I, I spoke to my mother hundreds of times about my relationship, you know, and she was uh, always there for me and uh, always ready to pick up the phone and, you know, to help me out, you know, so I mean, they did the best that they could, you know, and I really, I'm really appreciative towards what they did for me, you know, uh, in trying to understand what was going on in this relationship, you know, but it was all too uh, nice. It was all too sympathetic. It was all too understanding. It was all too moderate, you know, so um, my mother and my sister were all trying to be uh, too understanding, you know, trying to compromise, you know, and uh, I was coming to them with, you know, uh, information of uh, basically abuse, you know. And uh, uh, now that I've gone through uh, an abusive relationship, you know, I know what is needed, you know. So if a friend of mine came to me and gave me the stories that I was giving to them, I would be tough, you know. I would say, man, you need to get out, you know, you're... <laughs> you are crazy you're in the fog you know you know like sit him down and tell him dude you're losing respect for yourself you know like uh, uh, look at yourself you know look what's going on you know much harsher than you know what my family was saying is like oh maybe you can discuss this yes i see that you're not happy you know no no it's not about that you know it's about self-respect here you know it's about dignity you know uh and the same also with my guy friends you know i mean uh, um when I came up to them and I told them about, you know, these kind of cheating and infidelity as instances, you know, I think they should have been more tough, you know, they should have been like, man, wake up, open your eyes, you know, look what's going on, you know, slap me around the face, you know, that's kind of what they should have done, you know. Of course, I understand that, you know, it's not easy because when you're uh, friends, uh, you don't want to necessarily ruin your friendship, you know, because the person, the other person is very likely uh, in the fog. I personally appreciated the, the tough love, you know, so I didn't take it personally at all, you know, uh, but there's different personalities. I think quite a few people in an abusive relationship would actually be uh, quite hurt if they got the, the tough love. Uh, but I'm, I'm sharing this story because um, I had one friend who was uh, uh, quite uh, persuasive and this person told me straight up uh, what he thought, you know, he told me, look, man, this is uh, not who you are. This is not what, uh, not what you deserve, you know, and he was persevering. And, uh, and uh, I broke up not uh, very long after having a thorough discussion with this person, you know. Of course, the decision to break up was 100% mine, you know, but... Uh, um, it's nice to get some validation as well, you know, and, uh, but what I got from this guy was a tough love, you know, and that's what, that's what's needed. And what I found very hard on, uh, uh, on YouTube or on Reddit, you know, is that you don't really get that much, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people who are talking about narcissistic abuse, about, uh, BPD, you know, and they're talking about energy and love and, uh, uh and these kind of topics, you know, but they don't, um, uh, they don't tell you how it is, you know, they don't tell you that, you know, you need to be tough, you need to like go, go bring the dog out behind the barn and shoot it in the head, you know, that's kind of what you need to do, you know, you need to, you need to be critical about yourself, you need to look at your weaknesses, you need to admit to yourself that you're, 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 you're a schmuck, <laughs> basically, and you allowed someone to trample all over you, you know, you need to realize that you did not act like a man, um, these are kind of the truths that you need to accept in order to get over the relationship, you know, and enough with this uh, uh, lovey-lovey, uh, meditate, uh, uh, 
kind of messages, you know, you need someone who, who tells you the things straight, you know, and if you've been in a relationship with someone with BPD and a narcissist and they abused you and they cheated on you, you need to have a hard look at the mirror and you need to realize that you behave like half of a man uh, by staying in that relationship, you know, and you cannot even blame the other person. You need to blame yourself first. Because if you had dignity, if you had boundaries, you would have left that relationship probably within two weeks or within a very short term, you know. But you didn't. You stayed there because you were afraid to be alone, because you found the person very fun, attractive, whatever, because uh, the sex was great, uh, because uh, you were afraid you could not do any better than this person, you know. Whatever reasons you had, you know, whatever internal traumas you had, you know, they're not a justification for staying in, uh, in, um, in that relationship. But very few people will tell you this uh, online. Very few friends will uh, risk your, their friendship to, to tell you the truth, you know. Very few friends will, you know, slap you in the face and sit you down and give you the talk, you know. Uh, they will all be like, oh, I think this and that, you know. Uh, so this was a huge learning experience for me, you know, and I promised myself uh, uh, that if a friend ever comes up to me with advice, I will tell them the truth, even if it's uncomfortable, you know, even if I think my friend is behaving like a, a, a half uh, a half man or whatever, you know, I will tell him this, you know, because that's uh, that's what you need to do. That's your uh, uh, that's how you really help out someone who is in the fog in an abusive relationship. It's not by being understanding and uh, compromising and so on, but it's by being uh, harsh and quite brutal. Uh, and that was one of the reasons I also decided to create the, the channel was, you know, to bring up uh, uh, my own stories and also be extremely critical towards myself, you know, I mean, uh, um, I don't care, you know, to bring up uh, all the bad stuff and all the terrible things that I accepted and the, the uh, ways that I behaved because I think it's important. And uh, there's not many channels uh, where uh, people, uh, first of all, are open about all the mistakes that they did and then are able to, let's say, judge themselves uh, harshly. You know, I think a lot of people tend to judge more the BPD, the narcissist, you know. But for me, uh, if you want to heal, you need to first of all uh, uh, judge yourself. You need to first of all uh, look at yourself. Why did you allow that person? Why did you go back when she cheated? Why did you go back when they abused you? Why did you go back when they gave you the silent street? And why didn't you leave? You know, these are the questions you need to be answering. There's, there are horrible people out there, you know. Um, you're going to meet other horrible people, you know. Uh, this is unfortunately the reality of life, you know. And, uh, but uh, it's your duty to uh, protect yourself. Uh, and I'm not saying that you need to, uh, you know, not be able to fall in love or whatever anymore, you know, but the moment that someone trespasses, you walk out, you know, you leave. That's what you need to become, you know. And in that way, there's not going to be much, uh, much uh, damage. Now, of course, I have to make an exception. If you meet someone who is on paper fantastic, who never does anything wrong, and then you discover that they are terrible people and they're a cheater, this is a very different circumstance. But I don't think I have seen one single story or I've read one single story of someone who did not have very clear red flags. All, every single story that I heard is about a uh, someone who saw the red flags and st stayed in the relationship. Uh, there are a very, very, very handful of stories where people actually uh, did not have any clue what was going on, you know. But then you're not even dealing with a narcissist or with a with a BPD. You're dealing more with a fucking uh, uh, psychopath, with a sociopath, you know. And the the chances of encountering a, a full on psychopath are much slimmer than encountering a, a narcissist or a borderline individual. So basically, to sum it up, is you know. Um, Tough love, uh, get it, ask for it, uh, be judgmental towards yourself and uh, stop blaming the BPD and the narcissist and blame yourself as well.